Thank you very much indeed, Tom. I'm going to start by sticking, oh dear, sticking my, my neck out um, just a little bit. Um, that's not the greatest image in the world, isn't it? Um, hot sauce, and, and by hot sauce, I don't mean the institution, if we can call it that, um, at this um, one year on stage, but I mean the, the participants, the companies, the individuals that make up hot sauce, plus Twitter. Now, this might, this may be contentious. I'm going to contend that could do better. Um, so now there are, I'm certain that is a you know a dreadful generalisation, and I'm looking at Sean in the, someone like Sean in the middle there, and clearly he's absolutely exempt from um, from any such comment. But I think in general, um, it applies to all sorts of uh, all the social networks. Follows on nicely from what Tim was saying, but I think there are ways that all of us here, and myself included, you know, learning by the day without without it, without any doubt, we could be doing better. So. Is it taxi for wood time, or am I allowed? Maybe just allow me to, uh, to to move on the next stage, which is, and what I'll do is because we're not going to have the questions for time for questions um, as we go along. Um, for any cynics there, any any non-social media um, zealots, any people people who aren't quite convinced or who, and who can't wait until we're in the bar afterwards, um, I'm going to use the devil's advocate here to maybe put. The other side of uh, the other perspective of some of this to um, to make sure that you get a fair hearing. So it's not just me who happens to have the mic talking to you. The devil's advocate will actually play the other part in the conversation. Um, first point is um, now. Hopefully, you'll agree with me on this point. Um, numerous ways that Twitter can benefit your businesses. Now, I could talk about driving traffic to websites. I could talk about bringing employees into your business. Um, new business generation, media relations, um, at the SEO effect. There are all sorts of aspects to it, but I've only got 12 minutes. So in my diminishing 12 minutes, I'm going to focus on just one of those areas, um, which is improving the return on investment on the time and money you spend on conferences, networking events, and exhibitions. Now, I feel like I might be talking to a, to a relevant audience in, uh, in this context. And I'm not just talking about those of you who spend hard money on exhibition stands, you know, 10, 15,000 pounds at, at Earl's Court on a, on a stand. I'm talking about, you know, the time, the energy, the effort of going and attending events. You know, this is one example, but I'm sure, let's, let's call on the devil's advocate just to make the, make the initial point. Do you, is there anybody here who never, ever attends physical events? Now, I'm pretty confident we can say that none of you, we're a, quite a self-selecting audience, none of you come into that category. So I'm talking so far so good, we absolutely, we know that you, to a certain extent, you believe in the power of networking and, um, and events. So, uh, really, of course, you're here, you're here today. Now, just let's have a, you know, a think about, you know, I mean, this is a bigger than normal hot sauce event. I, I, I mean, I, you know, looking out there, what have we got? We've probably got 150 people. Um, how many people at Hot Source tonight will you get the opportunity to chat with properly? Um, I mean, if, you, if you're doing well, you know, it might be the person who's sitting next to you, a drink with one or two in the bar afterwards. But I guess, you know, I mean, if you get four or five, maybe half a dozen decent chats out of the evening, I think you'll probably be doing pretty well. How many missed opportunities? How many people where you thought, God, I know so-and-so was there. I caught him over the other side of the bar or I caught them in the uh, lecture theatre. They, they nip off early, or they're talking, caught up with somebody else. How many missed opportunities will there be where you thought, actually, I really would have loved the opportunity to connect with, uh, with that person? And then imagine an event which is 10 or 50 times the size of this. And that's not, that's not crazy at all. I mean, if you're thinking about something like Internet World, um, you know, Earl's Court, Olymp Olympia, we're talking about sort of four, or 5,000 people per day at those events. Now, if you're, if you're an exhibitor, at, I mean, I, 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 I go along to events like that. If you're an exhibitor at an event like that, they reckon that in a three-day event, if they can get 100 decent conversations of people coming to their stand and, and interacting, interesting in what they've got to say, they'll be doing pretty well. 15, 15 what, 15, 20,000 pounds investment, you know, 100 possible warm leads. 
But what about the other 4,900? Um, masses and masses of other opportunities for connection which are, being, are going missed. And, and the same applies if you're attending an event. If you're going along, I mean, if you, you, know, if you, if you go to an, a vast amphitheater like that, the chances of you, of you hitting the right people at the right time is just far too big and far too random. My contention is Twitter is the absolutely perfect way to increase on a pretty systematic basis the number of event connections that you make. Um, Hot Source is, 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 a, is a small microcosm example of that, but as I say, something like Internet World um, and the myriad digital events that, that are going on around the country. I mean, there's a, you know, there's a whole host of these events. A fantastic, Twitter is a fantastic way of making those connections. It's also a superlative icebreaker. Um, you know, the number of times, and it will happen tonight, and if it doesn't happen tonight, I could obviously be eating my own words. The number of times that you, you, you go to an event, um, you, you meet somebody, I mean, and I, I, that's what I find it all the time. Oh, yes, of course, you follow me on Twitter. I follow you on Twitter. We follow each other. It's an amazing way to start a, you know, rather than the conversation of what do you do or what do you do, or, you know, that, all that warming up stuff is kind of taken out of the way. You've, very often, you actually, you've got a bit of a backstory to somebody. You know a bit about their interests. Twitter is a superb way of, for a face-to-face -face event of, of being an icebreaker and of warming up a relationship. Um, so the devil's advocate. So, okay. So, yes, okay, I do go to a physical event, but um, the devil's advocate is suggesting here, you know, when I go along to an important event, there really isn't any time for mucking about on Twitter. This is time, this is time consuming stuff. I want to get stuck in. I want to meet people. I don't want to be fiddling around trying to get a reception on my, uh, on my iPhone. The fact is, much of the work and the preparation if, you, if you're going along to an important event, as I say, exhibiting or attending, can be done in advance. Um, you can, if, you, if any decent event nowadays will have a very comprehensive website, you'll have materials, you'll have, a te if, you're, if you're exhibiting out there, you'll have a list of attendees, you'll know who the speakers are. Um, whole, a whole volume of really useful info that if you spend a bit of time and effort in advance, um, checking that stuff out, you can actually save yourself um, save yourself masses of effort when it comes to actually uh, when, while you're there. Um, almost all major events um, nowadays, Hot, Hot Source obviously being a, a wonderful example, has got a dedicated Twitter, um, Twitter, Twitter account. So you'll be able to see, right, well, who is that event following? Who is following the, um, who is following the event? What lists have there been emerging from, uh, fr from it? So you can see the people who are circulating around that event way in advance, giving you the chance to start establishing connections weeks, even if not months, before you're actually turning up to it. So starting to actually build a network within an event which is coming up um, well in advance so that you've got a head start on every other exhibitor or attendee. Twitter lists, as I say, another, another great example. And another wonderful aspect of, of, of Twitter lists um, is that what that, that leverage it gives you to be able to then use some of the tools like Peer Index and Clout to establish who the most influential people are who are going to be attending the event. So if, if for example, again, I'm, I'm using the, the, the example of Internet World, but it applies to all those other big digital expos. Um, Internet World, you'll, you'll find that the, the attendees and you know, very handily, free of charge, people will will go and do all the research for you. So there'll be public lists about um, att the, the, the attendees from, from last year, the attendees from this year. The, the organizers will always have a list of the exhibitors to make sure that the, the people know who's going, to be, who's going to be there. The speakers will typically be on, a, on, a, on an advanced list. And what you can do then is you can just take that list, lock, stock, and barrel, plug it into, for example, Peer Index, and that will show you you know, whether it's a dozen, whether it's 50, whether it's 100, that will show you who are the most influential people who are attending at that event, speaking at that event, who, they, who, who the most influential people are, ranked in order, to give you basically a head start on, right, who should I be tapping into? Whether it's the media, whether it's potential clients, whether it's other exhibitors, to effectively then, with, with your st Twitter strategy at the event, targeting those individuals and knowing that if you can actually engage with those people, they are the people who are going to get you exposure and, and, and multiply your connections and effectiveness. Um, the event hashtag, obviously the most, most, um, the most obvious one. Um, every event will have a, have a hashtag. 
Um, we've seen H.S. HS, um, HS Norwich, wasn't it? The one for the night, yes, of course. Um, and, and, and again, that will hone in the conversation so that, you know, if you're, if, whether you're following the event while you're there or if you're at home, and this is a, another example, I think, of how you can save yourself time and, and, and make your work more efficient, is, is, is get somebody back at base, if you've got somebody who's willing to do that and is you know, perhaps into Twitter, get someone back at base to give you air cover while you're there. So they can follow the, the hashtag for you. Monitor the conversations while you're there. You can get stuck in and do the, do the interacting and, and engaging. They can actually be supporting you by identifying the people. You can maybe be phoning back comments to, to post on Twitter if you're not comfortable doing that yourself. But it's, it's, if you can get yourself organized in advance, of, in advance of, of an event, it gives you a massive advantage over everybody else who's attending. So the devil's advocate, what's, the, you know, there isn't always the case. Is, is Twitter sufficiently pervasive? Um, and the question there, Twitter's a minority sp sp sport. Uh, most people at the events I go to don't even, aren't even on it. Um, so I just want to show you a few facts which say that that is absolutely um, not the case. Um, looking at the, this is a CNBC survey from a couple of weeks ago um, of um, European business leaders on Twitter. In 2010, it was about one in three. The growth over the past 12 months has been spectacular. It's doubled over the past, past year to the point where it, we're talking around about two in three senior European business leaders are now on Twitter. So. The, you know, the type of people I'm sure that you would love to be connecting to, you would love to have on your, uh, on your client roster. Another example, and I know this is 100% this is um, valid uh, info because I did this research myself. Um, and this, from the Sunday Times Tech Track 100 of fastest growing privately owned tech, digital and telecoms businesses. Um, the, this survey only came out a couple of weeks ago. So I, I, I went in there and took a look at the 100 companies on the tech track, split them between the, the number 1 to 50 and the number 51 to 100 to see what their kind of presence and level of uh, exposure is on Twitter. 41 out of the top 50 fastest growing tech digital telecom companies in the UK um, are very active on Twitter, which I was pretty impressed by. And there was only one of those companies which was on Twitter, but a, which had a dormant account. So 41, so 82% are active on Twitter, 2% inactive, and the other 16% weren't, weren't on Twitter at all. Then look at now, this is not scientific, but I found this very interesting. Um, 20, only 24% of number 51 to, to, to 100 um, were, so just under, um, just under half were, uh, were active on Twitter at the next level down, if you like. 15%, um, uh, sorry, 30%, 15 out of 50 were, um, were on Twitter but inactive, and then I say the rest weren't on at all. Now, whether or not, you know, there's a message there in terms of successful companies are on Twitter, or do they get successful because they're on Twitter, I'm sure, you know, you can, you, you can try and make all sorts of circuitous arguments there. I think the main point is that, back to the, the original point, companies nowadays are, Twitter is a medium that, senior individuals and the companies themselves are taking advantage of. So the first question, is this a minority sport? No, it's not. not. This is now mass market. Next, um, oh God, that was a bit quick off the mark there. Um, events are about quality face-to-face -face contact. So why bother with Twitter at all? Um, these, these kind of appeared slightly quicker than intended, but I'll, uh, so I'll run through. Um, the good things about Twitter at events, they facilitate not just pre, but also during and also post-event engagement. So there's no, it's not a question where you turn up to an event and you've got, uh, you meet somebody, you take away the business cards, and then you're sort of fumbling around. So who did I meet? And gosh, that chat was an interesting person. What happened? You know, what happened there? Must follow up on it. Twitter gives you a, a, a very systematic um, vehicle for having a two-way interaction after the event as well as during it. It gives you long longevity of relationships. Um, it gives you events nowadays, a lot of people tune in remotely. So it's not just the people who are actually turning up physically. A lot of people are out there following Twitter from remotely. Um, and um, so that you, you get the chance to connect with those other, with, with other the virtual audience as well. Um, the, the, the wonderful thing about it, the wonderful thing about Twitter is the cost-effective presence that it can give you at events you can't attend. So if there's a, you know, a great event, you know, 
the, the user experience conference over in Australia, you can actually effectively ha have, a, have, a, have a presence there by connecting with the people who are there, by engaging with the, with the, um, with the conversations which are going on, with con connecting with the people, establishing relationships, um, all from the comfort of your own, uh, your own office. It's an incredibly efficient vehicle. Um, and as to the question as to whether people are going to be interconnecting on Twitter um, while they're at an event, the, the, the fact that there's a common location, a time, and subject matter means that, that, in my experience anyway, there is no better time to establish Twitter connections than when, um, the, when it's built around an event type of a setup. Oh. Well, maybe we're moving. Right. This is the old. I, I was, it used to it was Tom saying, "If the client gets mad, put him in the ad." The new version is, "To win the client's heart, put him in the chart." How about that, Tom? So, um, will people be receptive to connecting on Twitter? Now, these stats um, show these are the net new monthly. Because I, I, Foolproof is a client. Net new monthly followers on Twitter for Foolproof um, over the past year, um, and we were doing pretty well over the. Um, you know, this, this time last year, we were getting sort of just under 150, ticking over really nicely. But until we basically decided that we would trial, because there's, you know, some reasonable money being spent by Foolproof on things like the e-consultancy events, new media age, et cetera, we decided we would actually try and integrate the two. So doing exactly what I've said, following people, engaging in conversations, and really linking up what we did on Twitter with what we did on events. And the effect was pretty explosive and pretty immediate. Um, now we're, we're, we're averaging more than 500 per month followers. Um, that's net new followers on Twitter for foolproof. Um, so that shows that, um, at least in the user experience space, and, I can, you know, and I'm working with clients in other digital, other digital um, sectors as well, um, this, this applies in real life. This is not just theory. Um, this will and can work. Now, if I was the devil's advocate, my next, because he's, he's a cynical bugger, my next question would be, if I, followers, schmollowers. Yeah, it's all very well. Anyone can build up followers. You can follow people. That Some of them will follow you back. But actually, is that going to translate into, into serious, in, is that serious interest in your business? Are they going to translate into potential employees, potential new business, journalists will write about you, etc. cetera? So this is uh, pretty much my final chart. Um, this is what happened to the Twitter-generated click-throughs to the foolproof website over the past year. So this is, this is only Twitter click-throughs, people who've clicked on um, track links, typically through to um, the, the excellent, excellent blog posts that, um, that about sort of um, nearly half of the, uh, the foolproof team are now um, producing on a regular basis, some of it through to the, you know, the about us, the sort of um, the new jobs pages. But more than anything else, it's about content driving people through to the um, to fresh content on the site. This time last year, we were actually pretty pleased with if we got a couple of a couple of three hundred a month Twitter generated click throughs to the site. We felt we were doing really well, um, but it was only one when we effectively the same effect as I said before, we started integrating what we were doing with the conference strategy where people were not just attending conferences, where Foolproof was sponsoring or exhibiting, and, and basically it went through the roof. Um, we hit about 700 in May, a very slight dip in, in, um, in uh, sorry, 700 in April, slight dip in May, and since then we've been way over 500 Twitter-generated click-throughs to the Foolproof site every month. Um, and it has been that integration of Twitter and the conference strategy which has made that possible. So that is on a you know, foolproof, you know, they're, you know, they're big boys nowadays. They've got a, a decent sized budget um, and they're, so they're spending some, you know, some bucks on, on events. But this principle applies 100% to, to you, whether you're an individual or a company attending events. You can use Twitter incredibly cost effectively to make connections and drive traffic to your site. So, devil's advocate, I don't know, have I put him in his place? I'm not sure, but I would be very happy to debate any of those issues with um, a drop of Sean's finest um, after, um, after the, the final speaker. So, thank you very much indeed.